you know, I joined engineering in 1968, and it was unheard in Hubli, a place known as Hubli, someone doing engineering. They felt either my father, we were three daughters to our parents, and my people came to the conclusion that my father has something really wrong, that he, he supports his daughter who goes for engineering. People thought I'm mentally imbalanced because I'm joining a man's domain called engineering. They used to make fun of me. When I used to go to college, they used to make fun of me, saying that, look, that crack is going and all those things. You know. It was not easy, a young girl of 17 years, you know, people talking about you. And, you know, the more they talked, the more disciplined I became. I said, no. You know, what is this man's domain means? Is there something which is really important which a woman cannot do? We used to have smithy, carpentry, welding, everything. In those days, engineering means a complete engineering, not only software engineering like today. You have to do all those things, light fitting, everything. <laughs> and while I was doing, my colleagues never talked to me because they felt there's a new animal in the zoo. <laughs> but uh, we don't know where, which side it will turn. So keep them at uh, her at a distance. They used to look at me, but I realized it is not like, you know, a man can do better, even I, we can do better. I used to do a better job than them. You know, welding also, I was very good in welding, carpentry, smithy, everywhere. And, you know, in the first uh, semester, I got uh, first rank. That day I realized it's, it's a more of an imagination. It's a man's domain. There's nothing like a man's or woman's domain. It's more in your mind. And you can break whatever is in your mind, you can break it. This attitude of mind that you can do whatever you want as long as le legally, ethically right, helped me to do my engineering very well. It also made me to write a letter to JRD Tata because I was going abroad. I had three fellowships abroad to do my PhD. And I saw this advertisement, women students need not apply for Tata Motors, then called Telco. I felt very funny that even at this age, this was in 1974, it was in 19 year 74, I said, okay, I did not know who was the head of the Tatas in those days. J.R.D. Tata used to come to our institute. He was like a Greek god, very handsome. But from a distance only we can see, because after all we are youngsters, students, and never had the courage to go and talk to such people and what to talk. So I just wrote a, a, a postcard to him. Mr. Tata, I'm surprised that you are such a progressive person and in your own institute, in your own companies, a woman need not apply for a job. You are paralyzing 50% of the population's strength. And a society where 50% of the people cannot work that society will never progress, and that nation will uh, ultimately will not progress. If anybody would have done, I would understand, but not Tata, because you are always ahead of time. Let it be engineering, let it be in cloth, let it be in salt, take anything, you are always ahead of time. I did not know his address, I wrote JRD Tata, Telco Bombay, and I posted the postcard. Actually, whole address was wrong. The correct address was the chairman of Telco in those days was S. Mulgaonkar, Sumant Mulgaonkar. It, it should be S. Mulgaonkar chairman, Telco, 24 Homi Modi Street, Tamarind Lane, Fort Bombay 1. This is the address. Because it was J.R.D. Tata, it went to him. <laughs> when he read that, he called his people and said, did you give such advertisement? He said, he said yes. He said, what a shame. How can you write like that? First of all, you give an opportunity to this girl. See, I come from a doctor's family in a small town known as Hubli. I don't come from a rich, rich family or influential family or political family. I come from middle class ordinary family. And I married in a middle class fellow. They, he became rich later. So, J.R.D. felt sorry because he felt, look at this girl, she is asking a justice, gender equality. 
and why should we deny so many people write to me it seems you wrote a letter to jrd and you got a job we will write to you we should also get a job <laughs> i never ask for a job i ask for justice how can you discriminate a woman and who is well qualified on the basis of gender then i got a telegram in those days ladies hostel phone was considered a very bad sign to have a ladies hostel because boys will call so best is not to have a telephone okay so only way of communication is only through telegram when the telegram comes most of the people think somebody is dead okay <laughs> first you know you pray god and then you put a dia in front of lord and then open this telegram <laughs> so this telegram i got it and it was written there please appear for the final interview at pune at our expenses first class and such and such a date i did not to go etc then my friends told me in the hostel go yaar what is there and pune sarees are anyway famous 30 rupees per head <laughs> we used to get in those we will give you 30 rupees at their expense you are going so you are not spending your money it is the first time i got into first class train in my life i have never seen a first class compartment until that got into the train <laughs> went there and then i realized i am in a really soup because there are seven people are the only candidate <laughs> to interview i realized that i will not get this job because they are very upset with me however it was a technical interview and i fared very well then they asked me will you join us they told me why we have advertised because that time the training used to be in jamshedpur which is in bihar now maybe in jharkhand i don't know where it is and it was as notorious bihar had the same name what it is today even in those days we had same name so said it we will have bihar training center and there are no ladies toilets that ladies toilet is always a problem i think everywhere and it used to be in a shift 6 to 2 or 2 to 8 2 to 9 actually so how can you take then i told because i thought i will not take up the job i was going abroad i told my interviewer dr satyamurthy when a sang says me my grandfather was a school teacher no so he taught me very well history of india so i told when a sang when he started to come to india in 629 ad everyone said don't go to india it's very difficult to go even today it's difficult to go and he walked from shian to kanauj everyone said don't go but he said in chinese language there's a proverb for every 10000 li journey there's always first step to start i quoted that i said if you want to improve our country and the society there's always a first, first step is you have to hire a woman otherwise the country will not progress they said fine will give you i will give you the job i did not bother i went home and told my father with a, i was very friendly with my father with a great adventure i did i thought my father will be very proud of me but he was very upset with me <laughs> he said first of all you proved you don't have a brain because <laughs> you cannot write to person like jrd a postcard you have to write in a band lifa at least a cover second thing he told me what are you going to do i said no i am not taking up a job i am joining i am going abroad you might have about to go to do my phd he said look if you really believe if you really believe what you talk do you believe i said of course i believe he said do you believe that women have to be in equal with the men in the workforce i said yes i believe in it do you feel that the gender difference is not correct i said yes i believe in it in that case you have to take up this job because you raise the fundamental question that why women are denied and the job is offered to you you are going abroad that shows you are selfish depending on the circumstances you change your policies if you really respect what you talk and what you mean in that case you should take up this job do well and show them yes women are capable those were the days where we used to listen to our parents those were the days where we never had it's my life and it's my space there was no space anyway we were four children so there was no space so when my dad told me i thought over it then i 
you know, I tore my admission letter and joined Telco. The reason is I really believed in what I talked. I normally, I talk what I believe, otherwise I don't talk. So that's the way how I entered into House of Tata's and I learned a great sense of working for employees, working for the society, to be fair in life, to magnanimous, to be compassionate, all these qualities I learned there. It is my ultimate university in life, I felt it.